People ask, why would you choose to row an ocean? Inconceivable to many, the intimidating vastness and ferocity of the oceans is just too challenging to fathom. Why, they ask, would anyone in their right mind row away from a safe shore? How can you leave behind home and everyone you hold dear? Risk it all, and in the end, for what? Is it simply to test myself, to prove my worth, to escape the mundanity of life, to scratch my name on the epitaph of history, to be wild and free, or even just for the hell of it? Maybe in some small part, it's all of those things. It's certainly not for riches, and there are much easier ways to achieve notoriety or fame. The great Edmund Hillary said, it's not the mountain you conquer, it's yourself. To prove capable of this may be at the root of it all. I believe rowing an ocean is one of the last authentic endurance challenges left on the planet. Effort is measured in weeks, months and days. In our ever-shrinking world, by contrast, the oceans remain vast, ever-changing, unpredictable forces of nature. Rowing remains the same as it's been for centuries. Fishermen, whalers, lifeboatmen, all bravely did battle with the elements in the same way. Oh, to display a fraction of the courage those men possessed. Once underway, there's no getting off, no easy way out, no place to hide. The ocean tests you 24 hours a day, no quarter given. Your effort has to be relentless, day after day after day. It's truly a journey into the unknown with all the risks that that entails. A chance to follow in the wake of history's great explorers and face the ultimate of all risks, our own mortality. That's why I set out across the seas. And why, people ask, would you choose to row an ocean alone? I have read, a man alone in a boat is more alone than any other man alive. To experience that solitude on a planet of seven billion souls seems reason enough to me. Simply put, it's the purest test of mental and physical endurance. The indomitable human spirit to overcome the fear within must rise to the surface or failure is inevitable. While you're aware of its immense power and ever-changing moods, the ocean is totally oblivious to your existence. It does what it's done for millennia. It swirls and blows and rages regardless. It would swallow you whole in the blink of an eye. All these things drew me to face the ocean head on, in all its glory, all its anger, its relentlessness. This is the beauty of the adventure, all intensified by being alone. The rewards when they come are unexpected. I marvelled at the ocean's aquatic inhabitants, as interested in me as I was in them. The sunsets, the sunrises, the wild storms, all dazzled me with their beauty. But of all the sights, I wish you could have seen the southern night sky as I did. The Milky Way, seemingly close enough to reach out and touch. The meteorites streaming through the atmosphere night after night. Rowing through that same night in the brilliant light of a full moon, feeling like the only human on the planet. And that's why I did it. Those memories have burned into my consciousness forever. And people ask, having crossed one ocean, why oh why on earth would you do it again? But the lure of the ocean is a powerful force. In quiet moments of reflection, it creates an irresistible urge to return. To experience the silence of a calm day, the cacophony of the biggest storms, to ride the roar of the breaking waves. For me, the lure was too strong and return inevitable. The Pacific called my name and I responded. I wanted to be tested more fully, driven to the very edge and beyond, be the only human to have achieved the feat I set out to accomplish. This desire would be fulfilled without question, but the effort required beyond my comprehension before leaving. The brutal, never-ending grind eating away at my body, making it stronger and weaker in equal measure, whittling away at my humanity. I would learn to accept today's effort for what it was and not measure it in distance. Come to understand that to achieve something never before achieved takes every last drop of what you have to give, and then more again and more still.
Perhaps most importantly, I would discover my desire to live a life less ordinary had already been fulfilled. If only I'd understood the real adventure of my life was the journey I'd been on for 30 years at home with my family. Eventually, after 208 days battling the ocean, a third of the world's circumference rode, when I could at last smell land and so tantalisingly close to the end, the reward was the briefest of glimpses into my soul. It reveals who you really are, and just for the briefest of moments, lets you bask in the glory of a life well lived. My final act, stepping back onto land into the embraces of loved ones, took every last ounce of energy of my reserves. Nearly unable to stand, the ocean had taken all I had to give. People now ask, is that enough? I say the memory of the pain and frustration fades quickly. The siren call of the ocean is oh so powerful. The desire to head back out and ride those towering waves is as strong as ever. I yearn to gather more stories and dream of sitting in the late summer sunshine as an old man, grandkids tugging at my trouser legs saying, tell me another story grandad, tell me another story. And for all the blood, sweat and tears, all the risk and the hard labour, that will be the ultimate reward.